Are males an endangered species? How did we get to a point in our culture where gender is being erased? And then what are the spiritual implications of our loss of masculinity? This and more on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about males and females, man, woman, sexuality, relationships, and yes, gender. Hi, Alex McFarland here. So glad you're watching Truth for a New Generation. We've got a great show, and we're going to be talking about, among other things, men and church and a a very innovative ministry that's coming out of Virginia that is winning hundreds of men to Christ, getting males on fire for the Lord. And we'll, we'll meet the leader of that ministry in just a moment. But let me cue this up by talking about uh, a passing at the end of 2021. December 26, uh, 2021 was the death of Sarah Weddington. Now, who was Sarah Weddington? Well, she was an attorney, and she was most responsible for the passage of Roe versus Wade in 1973. It's been conservatively estimated that since the passage of Roe versus Wade, 62 million babies were aborted. Think about that. Now, interestingly, that's about the number of illegal aliens that have come in in the remaining years. Uh, what, what's so interesting, the Bible tells us that uh, we cannot mock God. Whatever we sow, we will reap. It's interesting. They talk about the, uh, the, the workers that we need that aren't there. They talk about the people paying taxes that we need that aren't there. We talk about Social Security that's being depleted. You look, the 62 million Americans that never existed have really, that void has been filled by tens of millions of people. And I'm not saying that I'm against responsible, lawful, moral immigration. But look, the the humans, the citizens, the workers, the employees, the taxpayers, the revenue, uh, we've disrupted the healthy balance of society. Why? Because for 52 years, we've been executing our replacement rate citizens. But here's the thing. Uh, Since Roe versus Wade, we've watched really the abolition of morals. Uh, Hundreds of times on this program and elsewhere, we've talked about natural law. The abolition, the abandonment of our Judeo-Christian biblical moral foundation that had been very stable in fact, unshakable for more than two centuries. It was Roe versus Wade that set those dominoes a-falling. Sarah Weddington was an attorney. She went to the University of Texas Law School in 1967. She went to Mexico for an illegal abortion because she had a, a pregnancy she wanted to terminate. And she became a champion for abortion and One of her former employees after she died, December 26 of 21, uh, was in the media saying that she was, quote, a master manipulator, um, not a a very nice person. Uh, I'm sad for her soul because it would certainly be not pleasant to face Almighty God knowing not only that you had been responsible for the death of 62 million babies, but really had been the single most responsible person for cutting America adrift from God and morality. I mean, really, so many things have transpired since Roe versus Wade. Uh, Sarah Weddington, what a sad, dark legacy. But what I want to talk about when we come back, we'll have a conversation with Rocky Marin. We'll talk about something he's doing that really is winning men to Christ, and how we, you and I, can be used by God to try to help steer the car back up onto the road from out of the ditch, how we can recover our moral compass, our spiritual foundations, and God can use you to help do that. Stay tuned. 
Have you ever wanted to raise your hand during a sermon? Well, here's your chance. Hi, Alex McFarland here from the nationally syndicated radio program, Exploring the Word. For more than 10 years, my co-host, Bert Harper, and I have taught scripture and answered hundreds of Bible questions. We've compiled a brand new book of the top 100 Bible questions from listeners of all ages, from questions about supposed Bible contradictions to apologetics facts that prove the truths of Scripture. This new book features practical content that will make the Bible come alive for you. Can we really be sure that God exists? Are there contradictions in the Bible? I need a book that will help me understand the Bible better. There is so much good content in this book. 100 Bible Questions and Answers, published by Broad Street Publishers and available online at your local bookstores and also through afastore.net. The Church and its Ministry to Men. Welcome back to Truth for a New Generation. So glad you're with us. Alex McFarland here. And get ready because you're about to meet a very special colleague and friend. You know, in the course of ministry, you meet many people. And as might be expected, some make more of an impression than others. But what God is doing in the Richmond, Virginia area through the life and the work of a dear friend, Rocky Marin, really has made an unforgettable impression on us. And I want you to meet Rocky Marin because he's doing something that I think is very innovative. In fact, I would pray that it would spread all across the, the nation and North America. It's called Man Church. The originator of Man Church is with us now, Rocky Marin. And my dear friend, and you're one of the keynote speakers at our Truth for a New Generation conferences, but I welcome you to the program, Rocky. Thanks for making time to be with us. Well, Alex, thanks for having me. It's a beautiful morning here in Richmond, Virginia. I'm sitting in my office, which is a converted uh, tool shed. Um, I had the guys from the ministry come over and they put heat and air and you can see paneled it. And this is just where I come out and do my study and my writing to prepare my messages and just be with, be with God. So I'm excited to be up this morning, excited to be with you. Well, it's good to have you. You know, you and I have a very, very dear mutual friend. He's probably watching right now, Bradford Howard. And about, I don't know, four years ago, Brad had me in the Richmond, Virginia area, and we went to Joey's Hot Dogs. Now, uh, folks, this might sound incongruous. Uh, Rocky has spent his career in the business world. It's a Friday morning. We're at a hot dog stand. And it's full of men hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many have come to the Lord. Many have come back to the Lord. And Rocky, God is using you to do what the statisticians and the experts say can't be done to reach men and see men get on fire for Jesus Christ. And yet uh, that's what you're doing. Uh, how did all this come about, Rocky? So... Um... March of 2009, I was in a Bible study that I've been going to. That <clears throat> It was my second Bible study that really just took me way deeper into a relationship with the Lord. And there was a man there named Henry Fenner. And when we came out of prayer, <clears throat> Henry pointed across the room and he said, Rocky Marin, you were born to teach and you were born to lead. And it, he could have punched me in the face and the feeling would have been the same because I didn't know what to do with it. So I started meeting with my pastors who were mentor mentoring me and they all said, we've seen this coming. <clears throat> so I stepped out in faith and decided, you know, being raised Catholic, what kind of held me back was a place <clears throat> where I could just worship with other men and understand that all the things that I was going through, all the things that I had been through um, were, were common to all men. And so as I came up with this concept, uh, we started um, in a room at the YMCA and we were averaging one or two people a week. And then my wife had, had the idea to, um, you know, meet at Joey's Hot Dogs and Crazy enough, that day Joey came to me and said, you want to meet here? Let's do it. And from there, uh, we have five locations now. We meet in a hot dog shop. We meet in a gas station. We meet in a flooring shop. We meet in a museum. And we meet in an office building. And then by February 15th, we'll add two more man churches. We'll be meeting in a garage. And we'll be meeting um, in a thrift store. That's so that'll be seven man churches around town. Well, I, I've uh, spoken at Joey's Hot Dogs, and I've been to the man church at the gas station. And, and folks, you, you, you've got to understand, and I want, Rocky, I want you to describe it. Um, early on a Friday morning, before work, people come, 
And uh, this is not just some, you know, sit around, talk sports. I mean, you guys deeply get into the word of God. You call men to know the Lord, to love their families and be true to their spouses, to be godly men. And uh, Rocky men are rising up to this challenge, aren't they? They are. You know, a couple of things we do that are unique um, when we start, when we go into the uh, six Fridays leading up to Easter, we do a thing called Road Trip to the Cross, where we're, we will invite six different men to share their testimony over the course of six weeks. And then in the summertime, you may remember growing up Vacation Bible School, we do a thing called Vacation Bible School, where I'll find a book or a study that has 12 or 13 chapters. And then I'll have guys step up and say, you know what, I'd like to teach this week. So not only are we helping men learn, we're helping men grow, we're helping men understand and all come closer to Christ. We're also teaching men or helping men to learn to lead and teach. Uh, in your opinion, Rocky, okay, you, you've been all around the greater Richmond area. Uh, could this be replicated anywhere in America? Alex, that's a great question. It could be very easily replicated. What we ask is that it's Christian-based, okay? It's not political. Um, if you remember the TV show Cheers, oh, yeah. and when guys come in get together, it's a lot of that badgering. In fact, our guy Bradford Howard takes a lot of bullets on a Friday morning, and you and I know him, and we know how easy it is to shoot those bullets at him, right? <laughs> but it, it's like that, and then we, we go to prayer and praise, and then somebody will share a message. Uh, I just finished a series called What Child Is This? Um, talking about the impact of the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, and so it's, it's, it is Christian-based, not political, and it's a place where men can come and worship, worship together, feel safe, not feel judged, and just learn a relationship with other men and hear messages directed at men. Well, well, exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, all across this nation, I think people of all strata are waking up to the fact that, you know, we're a nation in trouble. I mean, we, we've lost our moral compass. We, we need family. We need ethics. But look, we need the Lord. America needs the Lord. And many, many have said if God did a great work in the men of America, it would change the trajectory of the country. Now, here's the thing I want you to elaborate on. Uh, I, as an evangelist, broadcaster, author, look, I'm the last guy that ever dreamed I would be doing the things I'm doing. I feel very inadequate. But you, you're not a professional clergy. You're not some preacher up in an ivory tower. Um, you're a businessman. You're a very gifted guy. But Rocky, speak to the fact uh, that um, God doesn't call some, you know, rock stars and superstars. God calls ordinary people like myself, like you. And if we're willing, God does the extraordinary through people who you and I were very, very ordinary. Alex, um, I struggle with this every day. I, I cannot believe God chose me to do this. In fact, when the man church idea came up, I went six nights in a row in a conversation at 3.20 a.m. in a conversation with the Holy Spirit. And he kept, kept, kept saying to me, we're going to start a church for men. We're going to start a church for men. And every night I would say, we're not doing that. I've already started a Bible study for you. We're not doing it. And the very next day, God would put somebody in my path that would bring up a topic about having a church for men, seven days in a row. So finally, I thought, this is real. I just got to do it. And when opportunities come to me, this opportunity for the thrift shop and the, and the garage literally just came to just got dropped in my lap about three weeks ago and I didn't even fight it I'm like if this came out of nowhere because one of these places I've been praying for a man church for about three years and felt that God wasn't hearing me so if it comes to me now and it, and I just trust and I'm going to go do it you know the other thing that I want to say is all men struggle all men struggle but we believe men struggle better together right. and I've seen it in 12 years, I have seen it. I've seen the relationships. I've seen people grow. Um, I've seen men grow. I've seen men's families grow. I've seen men go back to their families after leaving their wives and winding up at man church. So what God is doing through this ministry is crazy powerful. Think about it. I go from sitting in a small barn, okay, two or three days a week preparing my message. I leave here and I go to a, to a hot dog shop. I go to a gas station. I go to an office building. We've got a guy that, that runs Man Church out of, um, out of um, the museum. We're going to have a guy to help me run it out of the thrift shop. 
So we're not going any place fancy. You're right. We're, we're, we're just going from this small barn out into what you would call the marketplace or the world in very simple places. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what's really cool, and folks, if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Rocky Marin of Man Church, the Richmond, Virginia area. Hey, I want to do this a couple of times, but Rocky, uh, give us your website. How can people find you online? Very easy. It's www.man-church.org. Very good man-church.org. So when, I, when I've come and I've been a number of times, Rocky, I've heard this testimony and it's really cool. Guys will get up and they'll say, uh, you know, I came with a friend. I didn't really want to come. And I thought, okay, let's get this over with. I'll, like they'll, they'll come just to placate a friend. And as guys are often sharing this, they begin to get, you know, emotional and they'll say, but you know what? I begin to realize God loved me. God has a plan for my life. And this, was, unbeknownst to them, coming to Man Church, the fellowship of, of other colleagues and brothers, and then the Lord Jesus, it absolutely changed the direction of their life. I mean, you've heard this t- kind of testimony time and again, haven't you? I have. I mean, I tell you what doesn't help when, 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 when a wife will hear about us and I'll meet the couple and the wife will turn to the husband and say, you need this. I can tell you right now, that guy's not coming. But if another guy says, hey, I've been going to this gas station or I've been going to this hot dog shop for the last year. And the guys that I'm with, it's it's changing my life. It's making me a better husband, a better father, a better uncle, a better businessman, a better friend. That's that's how guys have joined. And has it been at my speed? No, I'm a, I'm a sales and marketing guy. I want it to happen. I want it to happen now. And my biggest struggle with this ministry is we've had to do it at God's pace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> so, so um, two more questions with the time we have left. First of all, briefly give us the, the overview. What, what is the morning at man church? What goes on? Okay. So guys will arrive, they'll fellowship, sit, chat, you know, joke with each other, whatever. Uh, then when we start, uh, there's a welcome. We welcome any new members, any what we call them rookies or first timers. Then we'll go through prayer and praise. Does anybody have a praise they'd like to share or a prayer request? Uh, then we'll go to prayer and then somebody will share a message. And then we do a closing prayer where we let anybody in the room pray that would like to pray. Uh, and then we're done. And the whole thing is done in an hour. Now, the two that we're getting ready to start are probably going to be in the evening, 6.30 to 7 o'clock time frame, because we have five in the morning, and we've had guys say before, do you have anything after work? So I'm pretty sure with these two, we're going to try for an hour right after work. Sure, sure. So I, I feel very privileged. You and I have been friends for four or five years, and I've, I've watched the growth curve you've been on, and uh, I feel like you and I are colleagues. You, you speak at our conferences, and one of my, I told Brad Howard, and, and I've said to you, one of my things that I want to see happen, I pray for God to spread this throughout the United States because I, I've seen the power of it. So here's the question. For anyone who sees this and says, well, hey, maybe we could start Man Church in our city, wherever that may be, what would be the steps that uh, you would say to somebody who has an interest in franchising this where they live? So I think the biggest thing is whoever's going to lead it needs to be mature in their faith. I mean, that's just because, you know, for, for the years that I started coming to Christ, you, you've, you've heard that when guys come to Christ, they immediately want to share their story. And I had two really good mentors, um, one being Buddy Childers, who said, just slow down and, let, and let's see, you know, let's mature. And he helped me get there. OK, so I would say somebody who's mature, uh, somebody who can speak and lead. And if not, they've got other mature Christians around them who will help them build this out. I would encourage them to find a place, not a church, because when a guy invites a guy, all of a sudden he pulls up to church, the thought is, oh my God, I knew he was going to try to get me into church. I'm trying to get you to a hot dog shop. And I'm, I'm trying to get you to, to a garage or a gas station. So I think those are the things. Mature, find a place. And there are a lot of places that will let you do it. Um, and then just you know, start talking about it. Recruit the guys. You're, you're saying Christian. a lot of places that would let you do it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Churches will even come to you and say, hey, I, I want to give you a room at the church. I just strongly encourage you not doing that yeah. because that's what guys are kind of running from. 
Yeah, and you know what, when we do our, our worldview conferences around the country, we've tried to go to what we call neutral turf, you know, whether it be a civic center or, uh, now we've done a lot of events in churches, but when it's an auditorium or maybe a, a campus or a coliseum, it's kind of like neutral turf. And for somebody mm-hmm. who's new to the faith or just kind of kicking the tires, it's 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 less threatening if it's you know, not a church. Would you agree? It's, it's very less threatening. And, and I'll tell you the first, the first five or six minutes are key because if I'm going to walk in and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to see guys kind of picking on each other and making fun and having fun, that's going to be relaxing to me mm-hmm. because I mean, you and I both know when, when somebody who's not deep in their faith walks into a place where a lot of people are on a journey, it can feel weird. It can be intimidating. Uh, I read an article one time that one of the top 10 stressors in your life is finding a church, finding a new church. So now you're you're asking a guy who's probably got some stuff going on in his life that he doesn't want to share me at one point. Okay. To walk into a Bible study or something called man church. And what does this mean to me? Are they going to ask me to share? Is this going to be intense? What's it going to be? Right. Right. Hey, well, one more time, give us the website. So the website is www dot man dash church dot org and if you want to call me or reach me directly it's 804-912-6263 right on hey uh we're going to keep you in prayer i look forward to to when we can visit again and uh rocky you're doing a great work and i just uh pray god continues to raise up man church thank you alex I i appreciate you believing me and helping me thank you Well, folks, stay tuned. Truth for a New Generation is going to be right back after this. More about God's view of gender and what the Lord wants to do through the lives of men. Stay tuned. We're going to be back right after this. I just returned from a conference at The Cove, and it was absolutely breathtaking in every way. The mountain views, the tranquil areas within the woods, and just being alone with God. Morning spent watching the sunrise from a rocking chair with coffee in one hand and my Bible in the other. Evening spent reflecting on the incredible spiritual teaching. It's the embodiment of peacefulness. Come and experience the Cove for yourself. You know, it's amazing to think about, but there was a day in American life where a lot of Hollywood stars and even athletes promoted cigarette smoking. You know, I was reading this article about how tobacco, and thankfully we've moved away from tobacco, and uh, there's not a lot of advertising that you see anymore, and that's a good thing. But even back in 1932, Olympic athletes were enlisted to promote smoking. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Jack Shea, who was a gold medal winning speed skater, he did commercials for a, a brand of cigarettes. And he, he said, the, the, the tobacco and the cigarettes give me the pep I need for the races that I've got to skate. Now, we would today uh, recoil at that idea because smoking is bad for your health. And trying to be an athlete or trying to even be healthy while abusing tobacco Those just don't go together. The reason I'm sharing that is because if we think we as a nation can survive without God and morality, we're lying to ourselves. Since Roe versus Wade, there's been this this emasculation of the culture, this emasculation of church. And and we're told that uh, men and women, boys and girls, should not be raised by their biological gender. Everything's got to be gender neutral. Uh, That's called egalitarianism. And listen, just as it's wrong to abort babies, just as it's wrong to try to tell young people that there are no moral absolutes, everything is just relative. And now we're denying even human physiology. Look, uh, to paraphrase Clint Eastwood, we can make this easy or we can make this hard. And the best thing that we could possibly do is admit that we're going deeply down the wrong path. We're a nation of lawlessness. We're a nation of just chaos every day in the news, it seems like. We need to turn back to the Lord. But the good news is, whether it's a nation or an individual, if we humble ourselves and say, oh God, help me, he will. Maybe right now today, you need to call out to the Lord and say, God, help me. He will. He's promised in his word countless times, countless ways. If you turn to the Lord, he will hear, he will respond, he will help you. 
individually and corporately, nationally. Let's turn to God today. The reason you want to come to Karis is because of the community and fellowship you get from everybody you're around. They focus on their relationship with God, which makes all their relationships here so powerful and just easy. And it is so cool because you can connect with anybody here. It's to disciple people, it's to see people grow. And you don't find it everywhere, but you will find it here. The biblical bottom line, like so many other things in life, I'm going to quote Proverbs 14, 12. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. I mean, there's so many things in life and we think, well, you know, I got this or this is okay. And I know right is right, wrong is wrong, but a little bit of uh, bending the rules won't hurt. The Bible lovingly but decisively warns us there is a way that seems right to us, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Bible says the truth of God and his word are the pathways of life. Our nation, if we want life, and what does that mean? John 10, 10, the abundant life, the blessed life, the stable, secure, prosperous life. It's in the one who is life, Jesus Christ, and that's the truth. Hey, I want to say a big thanks to all of our partners who pray for us. They monthly financially support us. You're helping us evangelize the lost, equip the church, and you're helping us touch the lives of young people. You know, every year we do a camp. It's coming up July 17th through 22nd, 2022. We're going to be just one hour east of Raleigh, North Carolina. This is super easy to get to. Now, middle school, high schoolers, I want them to be there. I will personally train these teenagers how to defend the Christian faith and stand up for America. We've got wonderful chaperones like Will and Mickey Addison of the American Family Radio Network. So go to my website, which is alexmcfarland.com, alexmcfarland.com. My speaking tour is on there. I'll be at the Cove, the Billy Graham Training Center in July. We've got programs for all ages, events, publishing, broadcasting, and you're helping us do it. And let me say, if you would please send the best, most generous gift that you can to support all that we're doing, I'm going to send you a a couple of things to show our appreciation. For your gift of at least $25, you're going to get my book, The Assault on America, How to Defend Our Nation Before It's Too Late. If you could make that gift at least $75, We're going to include the brand new book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers. It's brand new. So please pray, please support, and you can find it all at our website, which is alexmcfarland.com.